Uh, I don't want to say a couple of rules, that's, rules is probably not the right word, but I talk often um, at Network 10 about having an optimism bias. Tell us about what makes you optimistic. What are the things that you're looking at, you're saying, you know, well, this is good news? Uh, well, the great irony is that the thing that has disrupted us more than anything else, and as I said earlier than anything else, it's in fact, the irony is that it turns out to be our saviour. Yeah. Because the thing that the newspaper business suffered from most of all over the last, say, 20 years has been the loss of immediacy. And so all of a sudden, you've now got the, um, the intersection of immediacy, and that's as immediate as any other media form in the, the world that the mankind has devised. Yeah. And it combines it with the five or six best communication techniques that mankind has devised. And what are they? Text, graphics, photography, audio, video, yeah. and now transaction. Yeah. So all of a sudden, the world that we live in, which used to be two-dimensional and very, very limited, is now the world is your, your oyster. So the limits will not be technology. In fact, technology has released us. Mm. The limits will be the the business models that we build around ourselves, and, and, and my colleagues here can, have, we've all devised our own business models. The time that we've had over the last four or five years has given us the time to work those things out. Yeah. And, and, and so, um, so get the business models right, but the creative front end of your business, which is anybody who's responsible for creating audiences or bringing revenue in, and that's you know, subscriptions and circulation and advertising revenue, they're the creative front end of your business and I don't know that there's ever been a more exciting time to, to operate in this yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So if you reckon you're optimistically biased, double it for me. Good, good to hear. And what the internet has, has done really for us is give media companies, and particularly us, vastly larger audiences than we've ever had before. Yeah. I mean, more people read our journalism than ever in the so-called glory days of, um, of, uh, of the peak and print circulation. Uh, and what you have to do with this enormous audience is to devise new ways of making money from that. If you look at what a client's need is, a client wants more than an advertising solution from us. They want a 360 degree view of their marketing needs. Mm. Now, people might say, how's the ad market? That's, in fact, only part of the question. The question is, the answer is, that clients are spending more on marketing than they ever have. They might be spending less on advertising and less on print advertising, but they want an event to connect with their audience. Yeah. They want content. So if you're a bank, you might have 20 websites that's interacting with your consumer. You need content for that. A bank's business is not creating content for that. That's our business. We're publishers. They're yeah. finding themselves being de facto publishers with all the sorts of governance and editorial issues that they've got. So we'll play that space. We'll provide data. And that's really just around the core business. Then you take that audience further down, and it's what other businesses you can create with that audience, yeah. with the marketing inventory and the audience that you've got. So, you know, there's a, the Newsweek years ago created a column called the conventional wisdom, which is the obvious thing that people think about any given situation. The conventional wisdom about the newspaper industry was that it couldn't reinvent itself. It's massively reinvented itself. You know, we've dismantled a very vertically integrated business structure, got a lot of costs out that needed to come out, and then found new ways of, new ways of making money. So that's where we're headed.